What's up, y'all? This is Jesse Gordon. Today we're going to cover unit testing in JavaScript and utilizing Jasmine. Uh, we'll cover uh, why unit tests in the first place. So what is unit testing? Unit testing is taking a unit of code and making sure that it works. It's a repeatable cycle. What that means is, is that when you add new code or modify it or delete it, you don't have any guarantee that the code that you used to have still works. Yes, we as developers strive for customization and reach to bloom and things like that. However, because of deadlines, change in requirements, multiple people that may not possibly communicate, whatever, your code can break over time, even code that was working fine for a while. So there's two ways you help solve that through regression testing. And that is a bunch of logging to indicate what went wrong, what didn't, as well as unit testing. And you do it in something called covering. So if you have enough unit tests, covering enough of your classes and methods that you can run very quickly. Anytime you add new code, modify new code, or delete code, you can run those tests and verify that your change or addition or modification did or did not break, break anything. Usually. Now, it depends on how much coverage or how many unit tests you have over a large amount of code. But that's the, the, the theory of it. And the reason that it's important in JavaScript is twofold. Number one is that just like any other... Uh, side technology you have to talk to your server to get its data and because it's getting data that's not in its native form it doesn't know what it is so even if it gets a JSON object it could sometimes get a JSON object that's missing a node and that could result in a node failing or the date could be thrown out of whack or it could get a 500 response with HTML rather than JSON uh, there's all kinds of things that could go wrong when you try to test that so you want to validate that communication or that set of data that you're working on your system your VOs GPLs whatever Legit. The second reason is just that your classes actually work. So if your models or your factories or your services are expected to perform a certain way, you can have unit tests to go in there and make sure that they work. And eventually, you can have an entire system uh, run in something that's called a CI or continuous integration. So it runs code, it runs its test every time somebody anywhere checks your code. If it fails, it says who it was or where and whatever else is broke. And it's a great way to have uh, you know a healthy amount of code still exist. Because of JavaScript's lack of typing, um, unit testing seems to have more of an important role because as your code grows, things like static typing is non-existent. It becomes a variant, and uh, it has a JavaScript has a very loose type system as well as in terms of quality and all, all the other tricks, not to mention the fact it's in a static environment. So when you add in the fact of multi-browser, multi-OS, and multi-device, the only firm platform you really have to stand on is not the language, but your unit tests and your code base within that language. That those tests will help you verify things like, again, was your code base legit, how many devices you target, and so forth. And uh, this actually gives you a lot of freedom. I mean, you know, having developers still trying to get those tests right. As long as you have enough libraries that work with those libraries. So you can see that unit tests are really, really important in JavaScript. Um, and now that uh, the war of you know, client-server is over, because a lot of the, uh, the ways of getting, you know, you write once, deploy everywhere now, HTML doesn't really do that depending on how large the scope is, but if I want to write an app and I want to write it once, HTML, most devices have some form of browser. So if somebody's going to visit my site every week and, and I want to guarantee that they can see it, you know, Roku, Xbox, Android, iPad, whatever, if I do an HTML application on my website, then I can guarantee that for the most part they can see it depending on the client server and features that I have there. Now, if you're going to do a lot of client-side scripting to help ensure that the client only has to do a few HTTP requests right in the blank, that uh, instead of server-side running in HTML, you're only doing single H, you know, data requests and actually re-downloading your interfaces, and then you preload all that on the client and dynamically build it, right, with templates. So as your JavaScript, you know, increases, you're going to have a lot more code. And unit tests are one way, once you get architecture and, and get into some oriented bases, are one way to ensure that you have a, a large code base that can continue to work and actually manage the code base. Right, so that is why unit testing. So let's talk about what is Jasmine. Jasmine is a unit testing framework and test suite that basically takes callbacks to JavaScript. We have a wonderful uh, website over at here at pixelgithub.com slash Jasmine, and all the docs are here. So just to give you a high level, their version of the unit test suite is called uh, Spec. So <laughs> it's Spec Suite Framework. They label it as describe, but basically anything that's a describe function is a test suite, right? So you can have a series of tests inside a test suite. So 
here we see it in the sweep and then it runs in this function where we run all these tests. The test will start over here. So we say called git and we kind of do this DDD or behavior driven development sweeping of this thing. It's more just like Ruby sweeping. And we say our sweep <coughs> contains this web implement for two years, right? So that's, that's the it function is like that. We have a name and a function for it to print it out and then the function will actually write the test. And we nest these tests inside the SVG function. Like everything in JavaScript, they have stuff for closures, so we don't care about the overhead that closing any function creates, we don't care about garbage collection, they just care that we have functions with the functions that can be changed, and we create function, and oh my god, my function is now just closed. It is what it is, we all care. The third thing that Jasmine has is a one instead of null thing. So if you're used to the cert, you don't care about that, right? The spec, but in the cert, the true to be true, right? It's very similar to hand check, if you're used to that in uh, Jasmine and Alpha X3. And uh, the reason their um, the cert is really nice is that they have some JavaScript specific things. So for example, to equal, throw out the number, that's great, you know, matching is all just another expression and not to be, not to bind, not to bind, that's fine, right? But what we're interested in is to be true for you or false for you. If you know anything about equality in JavaScript, it is a very special class. So it's, it's a true or not true or not null, but it's not fine, one or the other, it goes to hand, blah, blah, blah. So really good stuff. You can also group things. If you're used to the floor test in Alpha, they have these for each. So when you're doing a test run, every single function you need is something to set up first, a fixture or a DTA or a lock or whatever. So you set it up for each. And when each function is done, you can run them off for each. So they're all locked down. You can also nest or sweep, you know, sweep stuff here. Um, and if you want to just quickly skip some things and take an action from it, and so it won't run it, but it will report the runs back up. So again, it's sort of consistent and post hoc. Spies are nice, so they have their own built-in uh, spy, like similar to Mark, where you can identify the function that's called and with what parameters and how many times. I couldn't get it to work, but uh, I, I, I kind of showed up with it after this, and this is just really, really helpful if, if you don't care about setting up nests. Just JavaScript command, it's just really easy to set up a nest and then just have it work fine. So really, really helpful stuff. I guess the last thing I wanted to show was the mocks. Yeah, I like the mocks. Like, I mean, they have some mocks, but that's not really what's fascinating. What's fascinating is, yeah, I, we think they're special. So if you wanted to put a poor man's uh, integration test where you have to have real services with real logic that have some form of asynchronous, they support that all the way, right? It's just that it runs, it waits for the timeout, and then it calls the run function and just locks it and then reports it back, right? So it's all nested inside the test with it. So Everything you need to write a unit test for a CI is all here, right? It's in the Jasmine stack. And because it's so popular, there's a lot of adoption. So if you write tests in a different format, there's adoption for it. Uh, WebStorm has integration. So even though WebStorm is not a CSS side, they don't have Jasmine adoption. So Jasmine's, you know, it's really nice because it's, it's so well built. So that's what Jasmine is. And I'm going to show you some test stuff. So let's just take a look at the test. So we have our spec, also known as root. We notice I have folders here. The root directory is Java, a JS. And uh, basically my packages are the name of the group. So when I say package, I mean folder. If you're used to Java, I like to simply know the name of some packages. So spec slash or bat slash uh, attribute of our spec. And you notice I have my describe function here. And what it does is it says I have this attribute device data. And I set up some variables on the inside. I need some uh, state responses from the server. Before every single unit uh, test is called, I ask it, I need the exact date and service. I need to give it an event back. It's not necessarily a shotgun or a PMC or a robot lab or a really any framework that has someone sending a message in. That's just event testing. Um, it's a single instance that everyone uses to talk to each other, right? And after every single one, I null it out. So now I have a brand new server test. It's nice and clean and fresh. I don't have to mess around with it. So first, did my class check the run? Now, usually in most languages, you don't have to validate your class check, right? You can pull it off whenever you want. JavaScript is vast, and everyone has their own ways of checking classes and whatever. So the first thing I do is say, if I change the class, did the fancy HTML run it? Again, this is why you write unit tests with JavaScript, okay? Uh, does it throw an exception when we see the successful response? So I'm not mocking the Ajax call, but I am pretending that I instantiate the service and then call it as a response. Since everything in JavaScript is public, for the most part, unless you do the vars and things of this nature, blah, 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 I can state that. So I can get the JavaScript from the successful response, throw it, and say, hey, 
more so from the tech side. I mean, compute for instance, what you found in like your kind of like access mode driven AI stuff, that's all from the tech side. And, and it's great, right? This goes back to my blog blog post of not creating it from the edge. If you're gonna create a class, don't let it explode. Okay. So if I give it an error response, right? I take the JSON, parse the error string, which is right up here. So it's kind of like this is an error response. All it is is it has the fake response that's gonna kill you. Okay. So if uh, the server sends back the JSON of an error, it'll it'll click this. It's supposed to be a JavaScript object, but uh, the AJAX can do it for you. Let me see parse. And if I go to success, it'll look like this. Great, so now it's an object that I have response, that I have a type, and the, sim the successes have a body, and the errors have an errors, which are lists of things that went wrong, right? So this factor is valid enough that I can take these j JSON responses, and I can parse them to this and give it breaks, right? So I expect this callback not to throw. And what this means is run this callback function, and it better not throw anything, right? So it's the same thing for passing in an error, it's also the same as passing in an error. Notice if I, for whatever reason, the server returns null or the JSON class fails because it's a 500 or whatever, but it failed to call success because it wasn't a 404 or 500, um, I don't want that to happen. My server should be able to handle a null response, even if it's in a success and generates a correct message, right? I want this thing to be solid. I don't want passing stuff to be my thing. Now, you might say, well, look, I'm in Java, we have threads. Uh, I'm in ActionScript, we have global exception handling. Well, JavaScript doesn't have that. They have global exception handling in terms of reporting, looking at the test error on the window. But browsers, even Chrome, is notorious for swallowing exceptions and not creating a clear indication of where the problem happened. Now, if everyone on the planet used the latest version of Safari, most of those problems go away. But they don't. If your code's running on an Android device, even with those neato plugins, it's very difficult to tell what went wrong. Easier is to have a log or a trace to actually tell you where it went wrong rather than trying to debug JavaScript on the device. Right? That's what you want to have. You want to be able to parse it. So these errors, if they do occur, are logged, but I can at least verify that it's not a performance error. Okay? Um, so every single one of these checks is going to check every aspect of my query. And here's where I have size fail, but I can still verify that it did call fail. So again, if you, re if you understand my background with uh, event buses, I can verify that it called my callback. You know, when you think about backbone, it's going to register for, um, you know, it's kind of like if you use Flash as that event listener, or for uh, C Sharp, it's like the plus we have in event handler. In, in uh, backbone or underscore, it's called on. So you can have on and off. I want to listen for this event, and this is what you call whenever it fires, right? So when I call su success with successful JSON, I want you to call my success function. Notice it's called success of error. I'll test the error further down the line, okay? Um, and finally, I want to test, detect that it parsed uh, my device and sent the response correctly. It's not null. So you guys should be solid and agile. And finally, this goes back to running JavaScript. I want to verify that creating a new class is, in fact, in the instance. And this is important. There are ways of creating singletons or static classes in JavaScript. But they, in Java, purists, they would say this is a trap. Don't mess with this. You have all the same behavior. If it looks like a duck and walks like a duck, then it's going to behave like this. Okay? So. I can verify that this is a true class because the true instance has different instance names, right? So that's that's basically a spec or a test suite with tests within it. I've just thrown at you and some setup work, you know. Um, the test runner itself, the HTML page, right? It's not like no no servers or anything. I just want to create my logger because I want to log things out all over the place. This is the only global variable I have in my entire app. This allows me to get away with logging an IE and not explode anything. All the purists who, you know, are the hipsters who live in Brooklyn, you know, they use console because all they have to do is plug it and it flips it. Well, I'm not that way. I don't live in Brooklyn. All right. So let's go down. So the Jasmine runner, blah, blah, blah. So we're using require to set up some initial classes. When it's done, we execute Jasmine. This is really it. Notice this is bad news bear. Okay. That's what we're setting up. We're living with this. All right. So Jasmine executes. Okay. It runs this response factory spec. We can run all kinds of specs. So let's look at a more simple spec. This is a little easier to work with. So if you look at the simple spec, it just has a simple test. It uses scripts, and it has uh, A is in fact in the world, and B is in the world. So let's run this. Let's go back to our browser and run this. Okay. Let's run this simple spec and see what it does. Yeah, 
that's another plug for them on this blog as well. Uh, so, notice it says password and stuff, and then one unit test suite success is successful. Inside that uh, test suite, the single test that I ran, I was just like, well, where would be a good match? Click it. And it's bringing it back to that. I can actually click on that the, um, GS Tech Second Test is going to be working on that test. Um, so again, what did it do again? It just validated. When I say A can tell you're right, A is in there. Now, if I say B is not null because I can't get it, cool. Let's, let's, let's break it down. So here's my strategy. I go, I save the file. I hit Enter A. Let's play around with this, okay? Clear your cache. Okay. Don't type the GUI. There you go. One failing test. And it tells you the stack trace. Okay, let it run. Now, again, the stack trace is only up to this point, though. So if you have multiple, it doesn't tell you if this one failed or this one failed. It failed the entire test unit test suite. So again, this is bad practice saying multiple matches per uh, test. Again, this is dumb. So let's let's go through this. All right. So that's uh, Jasmine from Ohio. Now let, let me show you my stack here. Just so you can see a little bit of it. Here's a factory spec uh, for the Vice Factory. It it basically parses out these debug results. So when I successfully access activate the Vice, it's going to decode its nature, the description, the type of device it is, the serial number, the date stored in the database, when it was activated, and it and is it not stackable yet. Sometimes uh, it expires, sometimes you get a new device, and then you don't have to get another one. So I want to parse that out, okay? So I'm going to parse the factory and run the unit test on the factory. In this case, it is a device itself. Before each factory, it's kind of a little stupid because the vice factory is a shell class. I don't need to associate it. It'll say enter. It does when I kind of say instance, but whatever. I just want to at least validate that that particular pattern is being set up without a shell class, okay? So I only need to test two things, and that is if I pass it good GUI scan, it gives me device details, right, the device. If I parse it, pass it an error string, it uh, gives me the, uh, if I, and it should be null because I can't go to the device from the middle of the test, right? All right. One other one that's left, and that is what if I give it a name? It did not also parse the debug nor kill commits. Let's just test that. notice all four tests passed. So the vice factory is not null. It's actually a valid entry because it's all method based. It parses a valid device DTA when it has a successful response. So the vice factory also returns null for the device response if it's not null yet. And it doesn't expire. Uh, it returns null for the vice debug test. Good. That's as expected. So let's look at uh, Meteor for their response factory. Response factory is responsible for a little bit more. Same stupid thing where it's testing an error. Validate that it's never null. I never could get a response return that's null, regardless of what I pass it. Uh, if I pass it an error string, it should also not be null. If the error passing successful, it will also not be null. So we want to validate that I never get null, regardless of what I pass this entry. So you should be smart enough to make sure that any wackiness in this thing dies, right? You want it to just die, just rot forever. Uh, I should be able to get um, the type should always be APA error. If it's null, he should be able to just determine that that's an error. So this is If it is, if it is error properly, it should always be correct. <laughs> if it isn't, it will rot. So it should say false if you pass it an illegitimate version of Rust, right? This thing should never depend on anything else. If I get error codes from the server, I need to be able to correctly parse those out, including the message, and show them to the user, right? These are all important things that I should be able to do on the server side. And the reason this is important, we have all these third classes that all depend on the server. Just like we have millions of JavaScript web applications that depend on JQuery, right? Same, same thing. So that's what this uh, unit test suite does. So here's where it gets fun. We have another one in here called um, Activate Device Code Response, right? We tested some of those today. Well, what happens if I test an entry? Oh. Now, you get a lot more in here. There's some ad in here, too. So let's go ahead and just test this. 
we're going to do compositing, we're going to do class composition, uh, and everything passes almost the same way. And all the successes and errors and logs we're going through here, this is exactly the same. Okay? If you can, we will just find bugs in the code that's in development as well as when we change things. I'll get those in a second. And uh, I still get all my logging for my classes as you see here. Um, it's a little bit more to the side though, so I don't have that really bad console load kind of thing going on. But anyway, that is basically it. Again, each one of these attributes, the point here is that all of your classes are set to anything that you can change it. So that is Jazzy in a nutshell. So again, my name is Jeff T. Gorman, um, all this code is available on GitHub, and um, you know, welcome to it, modify the git, tell me if something's broken, and I'll give you guys some tips as soon as possible, and uh, if you have need some modifications or suggestions on some libraries or maybe just, uh, I don't know whether there's a particular library, I think I have almost everything, but uh, you know, there's definitely some add-ins to 